June 25th, 2020 meeting, the Burlington Conservation Meeting to order. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, and the Governor's March 15th order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Conservation Commission is being conducted through remote participation. No in-person attendance of, of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to or view this meeting while in progress may do so by tuning into the BCAT Government Cable Access Channel or the BCAT Government Meetings Facebook Live Feed or you can join the meeting over the phone by dialing 408-418-9388. The meeting ID number is 129-780-8579. And this information is being shared on the screen as we talk. Uh, to join the WebEx Live video conference, click on the link on the Conservation Commission's meeting page are on the town of Burlington's town calendar. Or go to webex.com, hit join a meeting, enter the, that same meeting code, and the password is as listed on the agenda. New public hearings tonight will not be closed so as to allow for comments for those who are unable to access or uncomfortable with the technology. Comments and concerns regarding public hearings should be emailed to conservation at burlington.org before the next meeting, which will occur on July 9th. Okay. Uh, the, uh, I will uh, go through the roll call to ask the commissioners and the associate commissioner if they are present to uh, signify they are present by aye. Uh, you can uh, send a message or hit the raise hand uh, button uh, on the bottom of the chat and uh, Eileen or, our, or John will notice. Uh, all vote will call by calling individuals uh, and the meeting is being recorded. So first we'll start the meeting by doing the roll call. Don Bernstein. Present. Gail Lima. Here. Indra Depp. Here. Bill Boyven. Here. Jennifer O'Reardon. I think she is absent. Uh, Ed LaTurco. Here. Kent Moffat. Here. Uh, our administrator, John Keeley. Here. Our associate admi assistant administrator, Eileen Coleman. Here. All right, before any of the applicants uh, speak, they should certainly introduce themselves for the record, speaking on behalf of whom they are. And uh, with that, we will go to uh, the next item, which is item two, is citizens time. Is there anybody online uh, by a FaceTime video or uh, on the WebEx or by phone who would like to say something not on the agenda. All right. The third item is approval of minutes. Are we in a position to approve the minutes, June 11th, 2020? Yes. All right, could I have a motion to approve? To move, Bill. Second. Ed. All right, uh, we'll go through the roll call. Approving the minutes. Don, how do you vote? Yes. Gail, how do you vote? Yes. Sure. Yes. Bill? Yes. Ed? Yes. Chair votes yes. Six zero zero. Six zero, zero. Okay. We're on item four. Item four is listed as a continued request for computer engineering check. It's on Wheeling Willow Road. It's the Burlington Jumbo Self Storage D 
DEP phone number 122-604. Someone here for this item. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, for the record, Robert Buckley, Raymond Bronstein. We made a presentation of the changes at the last meeting, and we were just waiting for DEP's letter of con uh, confirming that it was an insignificant change. And I believe that has been delivered to the commission. Right. All right. Uh, Lynn, do you have comments? Uh, I'll take this one, Larry. So, um, so we we have the letter uh, from Heidi Davis dated June nineteenth, saying that the changes are uh, insignificant and will not require an amendment to the superseding order. So that's what we needed, so that we kept the the permits in sync. Um, so what we'll be doing is then voting for a minor engineering change to the bylaw decision. Okay. So essentially, this is making the bylaw decision consistent with the superseding order. Correct. All right. All right. So, uh, uh, do you have any concerns with approving it, John? I do not. All right. So, do any of the commissioners want to make a comment on this? Please identify yourself. Is there anyone in the audience who has a comment on this? I guess the answer is no. Uh, I'd accept a motion to uh, uh, to uh, call the project the Jumbo Self Storage as an insignificant plan change before us uh, for the uh, Burlington Bylaw Article 4 decision for DEP file number 122-60. Four. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Roll call. Don. I vote. Yes. yes. Gail. That was yes. Okay, Indra. Yes. Bill. Yes. Ed. Yes. Chair votes yes, six zero zero. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Everyone be safe and have a happy holiday. Same to you. Have a good holiday. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next is the continued public hearing. Uh, this is for 20 Stony Brook Road. It's a notice of intent. It's to demolish the existing dwelling and construct a new single family property. It has acquired the DEP number of 122-63. Is someone here for that? Uh, yes, Larry. Uh, Steve Dresser, Dresser Williams and Way, uh, representing Ming Lu on the matter before you. Here am I. Okay. Do you have any comments, Mr. Dresser? Uh, yeah, I've just put it up my my pit my uh, plan. Can you all see that? Yes, Lena. we do. Okay, um, this is a continued public hearing um, from June 11th. Uh, we had made some revisions at the time. Uh, there were there were several flags missing. We went out and rehugged the, those flags from their prior survey location. Um, <clears throat> we added a setback to the stormwater system to show that it's 60 feet, and we added a post and rail fence. Um, we had discussions how the kind of the 20 foot no. Uh, no, no disturbed setback kind of wanders, uh, but there's certainly enough room back there that we're just, just going to put it straight across. It's about 60 feet behind the house and then just turn it outside the 20 foot no, no disturbed setback and run it into the existing fence. Um, we were asked to look at a leaning tree. It's actually over near Wetland Flag 3A, um, and it's clearly um, going to fall into the wetland. I don't think it really needs to be removed. I think within a few years it will probably fall, but um, certainly not onto the you know existing property. It will fall into the wetlands and become part of the ecosystem, which I think is fine. You know, instead of going in there and tearing anything up to try and take it out now, I think you'll be fine with it laying laying in the uh, wetlands, creating shelter and such. And I believe that that. That's it for um for the changes that we had. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, all right, uh, John or Eileen, do you have 
Any further comments on the plan changes? Uh, no, I don't think we have any comments. Um, I appreciate the way um, he, uh, you know, uh, jogged the fence over. It's, so it's it's pretty close to the twenty foot no disturb line. Um, I did draft some conditions, assuming he would put some. They would put some trees in where the shed had been. Not a problem. All right. So does the order address this, Eileen? Yes. Okay. All right, let me see if the commissioners have any further comment. Don, anything? No comments. Hale. I guess that's no comment, Gail, right? Uh, Indra. Nope. Bill, anything further? No, no comments. Uh, Ed. No. Uh, Kent. Oh. All right. Uh, on the left hand side, I, I had in front of. I think people have to mute. Okay. On the left-hand side in front of wetlands 6A and 7A, I thought there was a possibility that wetlands came forward of that line. Eileen or John, are you satisfied that there are, that the wetland line is okay where it is? It looked like the area around the 162, maybe close to the 163 was filled. I didn't notice anything that stuck out to me. John, did you see anything? No, I thought the wetland line looked fine. Um, let me see where 6A and 6. There's, there's actually, we talked about it at the last meeting. I, sh I should have brought that up. That's where there's quite a bit of debris over there. Uh, right. It looks like uh, mostly wood, old wood, maybe an old fence got thrown in there. And that certainly should be, you know, removed by hand to be in your, uh, your conditions. I, th I think we addressed that a little bit at the last hearing. All right. Not object if we added that condition. All right, so uh, I don't have anything further on this. Is there anyone in the audience for 20 Stony Brook Road that has a comment? Okay, the record should show no one said anything. All right, so Eileen, would you like to review the draft decision? Sure, if I can now find it. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. Um, Stephen's still sharing his. Right, you want me to? What do I get? Oh, no, do? I think I can just hit share, and then I, I should override right. you. Okay. Uh, right. Okay, let me open this again because I uh, lost it. Okay, we'll start with the bylaw, just because I prefer to do the findings, the um, description first. Um. Okay, uh, the beginning part is um, really just uh, project location and ownership. A notice of intent was fi filed for demolition of existing single family residence and shed and construction of a new single family dwelling, deck, and associated gratings and utilities, and restoration of the 20 foot no disturb area within the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands. Uh, this says when it was filed and do documents of reference. Um, the Commission finds this project is exempt from the stormwater management regulations as it's a single family uh, home. The, uh, the applicant proposed to infiltrate the new rooftop area into a subsurface infiltration unit and the driveway will be pitched to a stone infiltration trench. Um, the other findings is that uh, it, this may also serve as a permit under the Burlington's Erosion Sedimentation Control Bylaw and this uh, decision um, Grants additional permission to the above noted applicant in, uh, in the submission of the order of conditions numbering one through 50, which I'll um, deal with next. And we're proposing a cash performance guarantee in, to the, in the amount of 2,500 for this uh, um, project. Now, let me just open up the order of conditions. Okay. 
we're just getting this warning because I was using Google Docs. Um, so this is uh, de describes that this is for the project only as described. The conservation shall receive written notice at least two days uh, before commencement of activity on the site. Um, before that time, the applicant will um, contact the commission to meet on site to provide the uh, conservation department with, with department with evidence that the order has been filed at the Registry of Deeds and everything else that they all also have to provide at that time. At that time, erosion controls shall be inspected. They'll be placed along the erosion, erosion control line as shown on the reference plan. Um, after uh, One line we added in here was, after the shed removal has been completed, a second erosion control barrier will be installed at the location of the post and rail fence, or you can move the first one. Uh, materials should not be stockpiled on the site within 40 feet of wetlands. At the end of each workday, the applicant shall mechanically sweep or manually sweep sediments from the roadway. Um, any debris, sediment, or other materials fall into the wetlands shall be immediately re removed by hand. Lawn clippings and other materials shall not be dumped into the wetlands. This condition will be noted on the certificate of compliances existing in perpetuity. I can add one extra line in there just to say that the debris that we just mentioned shall also be removed from the wetlands. Yeah, yeah. mention flags uh, uh, in front of uh, 6A and 7A. 6A and 7A, okay. I'll just add one sentence in there. Um, the, most of the rest of these are as standard, no use of fertilizer within 100 feet of wetlands. The rooftop and driveway shall be managed as shown in the approved plan. The applicant shall submit an O&M plan to the conservation for the infiltration units, and that shall be noted under certificate of compliance. The fen a fence shall be installed 20 feet from the BVW line across the rear of the lot as shown in the reference plan. The new fence shall not have gates. This demarcation shall be ma maintained in perpetuity and okay noted on the certificate of compliance. The area behind that demarcation fence shall then be left as naturally vegetated and shall not be maintained as lawn or landscaped area. This condition shall be noted on the certificate of compliance as existing in perpetuity. And a minimum of two native trees shall be planted in the no disturb area behind the demarcation fence. And the rest is just as standard for certificate of occupancy. Very good, Eileen. Um, all right, let's uh, see if any of the commissioners have comments. Any comments, Don? Uh, no comments. Gail? No, no comment. No comment. Bill? No comment. Ed? No comment. Kent? Uh, no comment. Uh, I have nothing further either. Uh, okay, so we can move forward. Uh, I have a motion to close the hearing on DEP file number 122-643. So moved, Ed. Second, Bill. All right, how do you vote, Don? Don? Yes. Gail? Yes, in favor. Kendra? Yes, in favor. Gail? Yes. Uh, Ed? Yes. All right, that carried the chair, vote, carry, votes with it, uh, 600. All right, could I have a motion to adopt the uh, findings under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 for DEP file number 122-643? So moved. Gail? Yeah. Was that a second? Yes, Bill. All right. Don, how do you vote? Yes. Gail? Yes. Kendra? Yes. Bill? Yes. Uh, Ed? Yes. Gail votes yes, six zero zero. Uh, could I have a motion to adopt the order of conditions for the 22 under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 in the State Wetlands Protection Act. So moved, Bill. Second, Ed. Okay. Don, how do you vote? Don? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Indra? Yes. Bill? Yes. Ed? Yes. Chair votes yes. The chair records zero zero. 
Could I have a motion to acquire the posting of common surety in the amount of $2,500 for DEP file number 122-643 under Burlington Bylaw Article 14? Is there any discussion? All right, Don, how do you vote? Yes. Yeah. Is that yes, Gail? Okay. We can hear you, Gail, but I, I can see your lips say yes. <laughs> I, I read lips now. Indra. <laughs> yes. Uh, Bill, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Ed. Ed. Can you hear me, Ed? Yes. All right. Can you vote yes? That carries six zero zero. The performance bond of twenty five hundred is adopted under Burlington bylaw. All right, Mr. Dresser, I think you're all set with this project. Thank you very much for showing up. Thank you all. Happy fourth. All right, you too. Steve, do you want us to send it to you or to the applicant? Um, why don't you send it to me? He's in Florida, so okay. I'll get it. Thank you. All right. A reminder, everybody, please mute. I just muted everybody, Larry. Larry, you have to unmute. Thank you, John. Yeah. All right. Next, we're on item number uh, uh, six. It's a continued public hearing. This is a uh, Burlington wetland bylaw permit for 127 uh, Bedford Street, uh, Concave Tang and Vanden Lee. It's for grading, landscaping, driveway, extension, driveway extension, buffer zone restoration. Uh, we have, this is a continued public hearing. It was held, uh, I believe, back in January of this year, quite a ways back. Uh, is there someone here for that project? Yes, I'm here for that project. My name's Maureen Herald from Norse Environmental Services. All right, nice to see you. Uh, okay, uh, would you um, like to go first and say a few words? Sure, so here with me tonight as well are the homeowners. Um, as the chairman stated, this got continued from January. Uh, we had a wait um, to review the wetland boundary and then, of course, the pandemic kind of threw a loop into things. So now we're back. Um, at the last hearing, uh, the commission may remember this project. Um, we had proposed a driveway around the dwelling. A little bit unconventional. Eileen, would you mind pulling up the, the plan? Um, and it wasn't in my drive. I'm just putting it up. Give me one. I, I can probably grab it if that's easier. Oh, she's on mute. Sorry, I can see you. Let's see if I can, if I've got it now. Okay, so I'll just keep talking then. Um, so anyhow, we eliminated that loop drive-through type driveway. Um, by eliminating that, we eliminated a retaining wall, um, a substantial amount of fill, 160 linear feet of retaining wall. Um, we adjusted the wetland boundary. That was one of the delays because the backyard of this home was ponded, and we wanted to wait for the water to recede to take a real good look at the wetland boundary. So myself, John, and Eileen went out um, a week and a half ago, and we revised the wetland boundary. We extended it further back to the rear of the property line. So in essence, there's more wetland area shown on the slot. We also um, heard concerns from the neighbors regarding um, the driveway runoff. Uh, it was flowing onto the adjacent lot. This is how the house was built and the driveway put in. Regardless, we'd like to address those concerns. So we put an infiltration trench at the base of the driveway and then we run it 
along the property line towards the wetland area. So hopefully that will alleviate some of the drainage concerns your neighbor has. Um, we're proposing, so the backyard is cleared. Uh, we're proposing to remove those stumps, dispose of them off site. Um, and we revised the planting plan, we added more plants. Um, one thing to note is that when we did do the site visit a week and a half ago, the wetland area is coming up nicely. There's a number of cattails throughout. Um, so I'm proposing two trees within that area because it's, it's just bouncing back. And I can open it up to the commission. Okay, we're getting some feedback, so can everyone please mute? Ah, much better. All right. Uh, on, Eileen. Uh, I think you may want to mute everyone. John, are you speaking about this one? Sure, Larry, you were muted. Um, so uh, the uh, I would agree that the wetland delineation, we, we walked the site, the, the wetland delineation on this plan is more accurate. So there's the wetlands go further back to the rear, and in fact, probably continue off the property to the rear on the, the property behind, um, almost certainly because we've been on that property before and saw evidence of, of wetland there. Um, I think the uh, the driveway the driveway uh, revision is is good. Um, clearly, the previous proposal to have the driveway go around behind the house was just um, it would it would produce so much more runoff that it would really make the a bad situation much worse. Um, the The trench proposed will help direct the water to the wetland rather than having it go off to the left onto the property of um, uh, Kerry uh, Callahan, I think. Um, so it'll, it'll prevent it from going under the fence into that property and will go into the wetland. Um, and then the enhanced plantings. As, as Maureen said, the, uh, the wetlands actually bounced back pretty well. It, it looks pretty healthy in there now. Um, so all in all, I think this plan is a big improvement on what you saw at the last meeting in January. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, all right. Uh, I think what we ought to do is have a discussion, and um, uh, we can start with Don. Do you have uh, any comments on what, what you've read about this site? Don? Can't hear you. Uh, I might have to pass you, Don. We're not uh, we're not hearing you. Don may have got up and left. <laughs> no, I can I can see him. I can see his. Okay. Oh yeah, there he is. Yeah. I can he, see his happy face. He's muted. He's muted. Uh, yes. Don, you need to unmute. All right, Dawn, I'll go back to you because you're muted. Sorry. All right, next, uh, Gail, do you have comments on this? Um, so I reviewed the, the documents and the, um, the, the material from this meeting. I wasn't present at the meeting back in uh, January. Um, but uh, so it's too bad that, you know, um, Phil and all those trees had been removed. Um, this sounds like this is a, um, a nice wetland. Um, do I, I just want a clarification. So um, the trench I see, you know, goes around the back and leads into the um, uh, wetland. 
Is there any type of trench along the driveway to deal with run runoff? Or that walkway? So, stone trench there? So, existing conditions, there's no trench. And when the house was constructed and the driveway constructed, it was just graded towards the neighbor's property by the builder. Was that not so? Is you know is the water onto the neighbor's property alleviated now? Um, is there any water coming from the the driveway or the walkway to the neighbor's uh, property? Yes, and that's why we're proposing the trench itself so that we can help alleviate some of the runoff going on to the driveway or the neighbor's property. Okay, so I just have a question on clarification that I might, I might not be looking at the plan correctly. Um, the trench goes from the back corner of the house towards the wetland, is that correct? Yes, so it's at the, the base of the driveway and then it follows the property line. Right, so it's a 45 degree, a 90 degree angle there, Gail. Yeah, I, I see it now. I actually uh, was looking at the driveway wrong. Um, and the, so the driveway is sloped to that trench, is that correct? Yes, when the building yeah, constructed the driveway, it sloped it towards the trench to that low spot. And it's okay. a, There's it's a, a, um, a point 94.7 in the corner, right near the neighbor's property line. Right, so that it's a pretty it's a pretty um, big slope. The driveway really drops down. It's not a gentle slope. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, can we can we go back to that, Gail? Before we leave you, uh, is that driveway um, is that driveway like from elevation ninety six down to ninety four point seven? Is that even all the way across? I I seem to remember. I thought it would spill off the side. And that what you said as a drainage uh, ditch going up along the straight portion of the driveway, making it a T-shaped drainage structure might be a very good idea. But I can't, I can't remember now whether it's sloped off to the left. I agree with you, Larry. This is Bill. I have the same recollection, and I think it would be better if that trench followed the entire length of the driveway. So I, just, I just want to make sure to scale again um, that um, because one of the things that's really frustrating is that we see homes that are permitted permitted with uh, trenches to catch the driveway runoff, and then you know after a short time, the owners in the house they end up filling it in and you know planting grass on it, and the trench is gone. Um, so. Um, uh, it has to be really clear language in the um, uh, conditions, and I think that uh, you know the owners need to know that if they fill this in, they'll be um, negating the, uh, the conditions and they can be fined. May May I address that? So the owners are on tonight's meeting, so they're hearing the commission loud and clear. Um, I believe what happened with this dwelling was. Um, I don't think it ever went through conservation permitting because I think there was, the town wasn't aware of the wetland at the time. So it didn't go through conservation in terms of permitting. Um, and there was no trench or any type of infiltration trench along the driveway when the builder built the home in the driveway. My, my clients didn't build this house, they moved into it. So just to clarify, it, it did go through conservation for um, an administrative erosion and sedimentation control permit. The, the wetland was missed. It was summertime and nobody noticed that the, the wetland is back there, but it did go through for an erosion permit. Um, so I'm not really sure how this driveway got by, but um, it did. And I understand, I wasn't trying to Gail, you're muted. Okay, so uh, I'm not I'm trying to suggest that the owners build in a trench. It's just from my experience looking at other homes that have been built that have put trenches into their driveways that within a year or two, they disappear. 
And especially because of the runoff to the neighbor's property, it's really important that this trench is maintained and that if that condition is not um, you know, continued that the owner could be um, uh, fine in the future. And we we can certainly make that a, a condition of, in perpetuity. Uh, this is Bill on that same topic. Under the original erosion and sedimentation control permit, isn't it required that runoff not be directed towards the neighbor's property? Shouldn't that be part of it then? So this. It probably was. I mean, at the. The driveway, I think the driveway pitches towards the rear primarily. I mean, some of it may go off to the left, but most of it goes towards the wetland. Um, okay, I'm not sure. I, I'm not. I'm not positive it was constructed as as proposed. Um, it didn't require an as-built plan because it was just an administrative permit. Okay. Yeah, and and I, 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 the would like to ask. Where did we end up? Are we, as a commission, requiring the additional drainage along the straight portion of the driveway on the left because the people at 125 uh, Bedford Street at the last hearing in January, they said that they have quite a bit of water coming down into the yard and that they now have, they claim to have an acre of land that they cannot use because of the water. That the water is not uh rolling off the driveway to the left into the product. Maureen, can you can anyone have an opinion? Please, we can't hear anybody else. Oh, okay. So um we can extend the infiltration trench up. That's not a problem. Um I was just taking a look at the scale and the plan. So between the existing driveway, there's a white vinyl fence between that and the owners but we got two feet we can put in more stone in an infiltration trench that's not a problem that's great thank right. you sure larry larry a couple issues one uh don don says he's got he's back on and he wants to ask questions um but before i before that um so the the water going into the wetland in the rear is going to end up partly in the neighbor's backyard whether whether it flows across the property line from the driveway or goes into the wetland in the back it's all one wetland and the the level of as the water of the the level of the uh water in the wetland rises it's going to rise in the neighbor's yard as well because it's all one contained wetland there yes but we don't want john the water in the front part of that guy's lot we would like it if it's going to go where the wetland isn't back that's where we want it to go right okay all right, uh, Don, are you back on? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? We can hear you. It's nice to see you again. Okay. Um, I'd, I'd like to share my screen. I have an aerial photo of this property I'd like to put up and ask a few questions about. Go for it. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get to this. Okay, so <clears throat> can you everybody see this? Yeah. We're looking at, at the um, driveway here. Can you see my cursor? Yes. Yes. And uh, you're talking about the trench, which is right around here somewhere, right? Um, I, I had my question related to the plantings that were, were intended to. There's, there were like 60 trees taken down here. You can see the whole pattern. It's just carved right out. Um, and the plan to replace vegetation is only for this area where I'm moving my cursor back and forth now. Um, doesn't look like there's much going on here in terms of preventing. This is all running downhill, I assume. And uh, I, I believe that um, you're not replacing nearly as many uh, as many veg vegetation items as maybe could be done. The chair will add to that, Don, if you don't mind. That sure. Not only was there 56 trees, but I think that was the subject of a violation two years ago. And I believe, if I'm correct, we did not get a response. When were the trees removed? Was it two years ago? What was the question? 
When were the trees removed? I'm sorry, this is Gail. Maureen, you might want to just mute yourself because your patrons are making lots of noise. It's hard to hear. Thank you. So it was two or three years ago. I'm, I'm not sure the exact date. Okay. Thank you. I think that answers my other main question and statement about, uh, I guess the other question is why just this area with the vegetation here, uh, the trees? You're putting very few trees back and trees roots do absorb water all year round, whether there are leaves on them or not. Um, I know that was brought up in the minutes. Uh, it, you can just see where the water's going right here. It's all draining right across because there's nothing there. That's all I've got to say. So the question Don is proposing to the commission is whether the uh, revegetation plan is sufficient given the number of trees that were exactly. So the uh, what they're proposing is to restore the twenty foot well the wetlands in the twenty foot no disturb area. So the idea is that the commission would probably allow the removal of trees outside the twenty foot. Um, they're already gone, and the the reason for it was the people wanted to turn their backyard into a lawn. They want some lawn, um, so by planting trees um, outside the twenty foot, it would sort of be not would be defeating the purpose of what they were trying to do. I mean, it's certainly your, certainly your call, but that's what they're proposing. Right. Any comments from anyone else? Please identify yourself. This is Bill. Uh, I agree with what John just said. If this had not been touched and they came before us to uh, put in a, uh, you know, to clear the yard, we would have normally allowed cutting outside the 20 foot no disturb. Gail, yeah, I agree. Yeah, this is Enro. I also agree with that. Yeah. One question on um, where would snow be piled and how much of an effect would that be on that trench? Where it's right alongside the house, right alongside the fence. Is there a concern there at all, John? I, I don't know what they do with the snow. I, I'm not sure. It just looked like from the length of the driveway that it would be piled up right at that point where the trench, you know, makes that 90 degree turn. Right. The other the other issue which we haven't really discussed, although they um, are proposing to remove the proposed driveway that were around went around the back. If you look at the plan, there is some additional pavement proposed in the front. Um, so if you look at the the plan, there's a proposed paved area in front of the house that's not there. Um, presumably that'll increase runoff, although that area right now is very heavily compacted because they park their cars there. If you've been out there, um, the area they're proposing to pave is where they park now. Um, so I'm not sure how much additional runoff there'll be, but um, it is there is additional pavement proposed, which will be contributing to the runoff at the back. Yeah. John, thank you for bringing that up. Um, my intent was to show this on the plan so that the commission can see it. It is located outside of the 100 foot buffer zone, but I want it to be as transparent as possible with the commission. Uh, okay, uh, let's, uh, let's keep going. Uh, Indra, do you have anything further? Yes, uh, my question is uh, the trench have to be careful that the trench is not clogged due to snow or something. So that this trench, the front, should be maintained. And can we put something in that regard? Sure, I can, I can do an operation and maintenance plan and include it with the filing. That's not a problem. OK, okay. thank you. Yep. Morning. Bill, anything? No, Boyden? One comment on the. Um the retaining wall and the chain link fence on the left side of it as it approaches the driveway, it seems to end short of the boundary and it looks like there's clearly an area left which would allow access into the protected area. You know, the, um, I don't know why that fence is not continued to the property line. 
because um, right now the way it's drawn, real bad lawn mowers, leaves, grass clippings, they could all get in there very easily. So the building department requires um, a fence or some sort of guardrail on retaining walls four feet or higher. So in order to comply with that, we wanted to show it on the fence. Um, at the rear of the property line, there's a six foot white vinyl fence back there. Um, so I, I actually thought the fence would be a good idea because it would permanently protect the no disturb as well as the wetland itself. Um, but it has a gap on the left. Okay? Oh, okay. We could extend that. That's that's not a problem. That would be ideal. Okay. All right, Ed. Anything? I made my comment. I'm good. Kent, you have a comment? Uh, no, no comments. I think most of the other members covered it. Uh, commissioners. Okay. Uh, the only question I have is that. Uh, because of the cutting of trees, there's been significant increase in flooding. And we heard from uh, the neighbor at the last time. And one of the things that was discussed, I'd be interested in hearing what people have to say, is whether it, there would be merit to increasing the size of the wetlands in order to mitigate, if we're not replanting all those trees, but they are causing additional water runoff because they're not taking up water. Should we be planting, should we be enlarging the wetland somewhat, uh, even if it's 10 feet more, uh, in order to accommodate additional flood storage? Uh, what do you folks think about that? Please identify yourself if anybody wants to talk about it. Well, this is Bill. Um, it's not really a flood zone. I don't think we have to, you know, try to spread it out in order to accommodate. Well, I think at the, the, the fairly dense planting that they're planning on putting in there will eventually help in absorbing and maintaining some of the water out of the ground. Um, yeah. I don't think I would recommend trying to increase the wetland area. Okay. Anyone else have an opinion? And then we can let that go if that's the case. Is it open for people of the town or are you just looking for the conservation committee? Uh, actually, I was just calling on the conservation committee, but actually I was going to call for people to, who are in the audience, which I can see you now since you've started talking. Uh, I'll probably call you on for people to make comments any minute. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, okay. So if there's nothing further from the commission on that, or our administrator. Uh, Larry, uh, the scale. I just have another point, uh, not related to uh, the uh, flood storage uh, issue that you brought up. Um, just that uh, Maureen had uh, mentioned uh, to Indra's comment about maintaining the trench that she was going to do an uh, uh, O&M for that. I just want you to be aware that in the conditions of course, especially because the trench drains to wetland, it will say that no herbicides can be used. So uh, that can't be part of the O&M. Okay, I, I think the person from North Environmental heard that, I hope. Okay, uh, if there's nothing further from the commission, is there are people online in our audience? If you are, which I know there are, please identify, just introduce your names and where you're located, and uh, the floor is yours. Hi, this is um, Mike Callahan, 125 Bedford Street. Um, thanks for the opportunity to let us speak. Uh, I know there's, this has been a stressful situation for us. Um, I, I, I do want to revisit um, thinking about expanding that wetland. Um, when we moved here five years ago, that water runoff was, was minimal. We could use our yard. Our yard was usable. Can, excuse me? So our yard was usable, now it is not. We have 20 yards that that wetland is expanded up into our property because of the work that was, that was performed at our neighbor's yard. Um, I really would like this commission to entertain expanding that, that 
that wetland into their property a bit. I do think that that this is significant flooding. You, I know John has been out here. You've seen it. You've seen it, um, it and it's an ongoing problem. Um, and it's a very it makes for a very stressful situation in our household um, with that with that buildup of of water that was not there three to four years ago. We, we our sump is never stopped. It continue. It had it stopped recently now because we we've been in a drought for two weeks. But um, but I, I I would really like this team to to consider, you know, strongly consider expanding that wetland a bit. And I do appreciate the revisions to um, to with the infiltration trenches. I I do, I do appreciate that effort. Okay, uh, I'd like to ask the. Uh uh, the commission for comments, if they have any, uh, and I'd like to also point out that at the hearing in January, uh, there, there was some talk, since this is the second violation, there was some sentiment, I don't know by who, that a fine should be imposed because it's their second violation. Uh, in, in, I am thinking, uh, and I'll throw this just out for consideration, in lieu of imposing a fine, they could perhaps do something along the lines that this gentleman from 125 uh, uh, Bedford Street is talking about to help rectify a situation that has perhaps uh, been ongoing since they took down 66 trees. Would anyone on the commission or John or Eileen like to speak? Uh, this is Bill. Uh, I believe it was at my suggestion on the fine. Um, I don't know, is there a precedent for asking someone to increase the wetland from what has already been flagged? It just seems like it's unusual to me. It is generally unusual, but in this case, it's the result. Uh, our ask would be a result of a remedy of a violation. Theoretically, we could do the, they're here for a notice of intent, but we also could have done it under an enforcement order. So it doesn't happen all that often, but in this situation, it's analogous to filling of wetland because they have essentially increased flooding onto somebody else's property by the amount of trees that they took down. Well, it's an interesting point. Okay. Uh, uh, would anyone else like to comment? Uh, Kent, John, Gail? Indra. I have a question. So, uh, John um, or Eileen, from your observations of the wetland that exists there today, um, has it changed in size from you know before and after the tree removal? So, I never observed it before the tree removal. Um, the area, the areas had a lot of historical um, impact. So. Um, 121 up the street, two houses up the street, or three houses up the street, has a pond in its backyard, a, a large pond. Um, I'm sure it's much bigger than it used to be because of activities that took place at 123, um, number 123. Um, they did some filling, maybe it was before the Wetlands Protection Act, but that wetland is much bigger. I'm sure that used to flow in this direction, so there may have been more water down here in the past before 123 did their filling. Um, additionally, the, 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 um, so the redelineation shows that the wetland continues off the rear of this property onto properties behind, and I believe that there's been some activity back there as well which may be preventing the water to continue to flow in that direction. So it's kind of a complex situation um, without a lot of historical data on the, del the original delineations. So it, so it sounds like um, there's been development around that wetland that a number of sources may have um, changed and um, you know, maybe increased the, the runoff to it. That was right. Yes, yes. Uh, right, and and the development of this house. It, I mean, the, the current owners didn't build this house, but it's a giant house with a big driveway that pitches down towards the well, and and then they then they exacerbated the situation by cutting down a bunch of trees. So undoubtedly, it's wetter. Even if they hadn't cut down the trees, the well would probably be wetter just because of the house and the driveway that were built there. I have a question about the fill that they're bringing in. 
um, they're putting the retaining wall and they're going to have four or five feet of fill in the back corner there by the uh, retaining wall near the wetland. Uh, is, do you think that the leveling off of the yard in general, so it no longer tends to slope down towards the wetland, will uh, some of the flow and maybe act as a, a re reservoir and a filter for reducing the amount of flow from the, from the yard into that wetland? No, I don't think so. It, it's groundwater. And so most of the overland flow going in there is coming down the driveway, probably not not going across the yard so much. Um, OK, it'll certainly be it'll certainly help once it's vegetated. It's all bare ground now. So there's you know the water runs off there now um, because there's nothing to slow it down or soak it up. Even lawn would be better than what's there now. Mm. So I, I may have missed it. Where, where does the rooftop uh, go to from the south? Um, it's behind the deck. Right. Uh, let me ask the commission. Does the commission feel that there's any merit to uh, planting something other than lawn in the very back portion of the yard to help? I mean, the runoff goes from elevation 96 to 94 to, I can't read the rest of it, 92. Uh, it seems to me that that is there any vegetation or something in the back 20 feet that would uh, help take up water to help reduce the amount of water, not only just running off, but to also help take up water. Is there anything that you could think of planting, uh, Maureen, that would help the situation without going to expanding the wetland for more water? <laughs> I mean, we could certainly add some plants to that area. Um, I do think, though, once, if, if this gets permitted, once the work's done and we have a well-established lawn, that'll help take up the water. Um, but if the commission wants a few more shrubs in there, that's not a problem. Uh, could we ask you to think about it, which might be, which might be in the best interest of the neighbors to help? I mean, you can either accommodate more water by expanding the wetland, or you can try to reduce the amount of water by catching some of it there and have it taken up by plants. Okay, I, I can think about that. That's not a problem. The, the one thing I just want to note is that the neighbors had mentioned that they have a sump pump. So that tells me that we have a high groundwater here and that if that sump pump is running constantly through the year, their basement is in the water table. Um, I have not been on the neighbor's property, but that wetland in the back is an established wetland. Um, it's, it's been there a long time. Along with that, uh, to the neighbors, that's a good point. Uh, did they always have a sump pump in their basement? So when we came in, when we bought this house, that sump pump didn't kick kick on for, years. for, for years, for years, at least two to three years. So it was here. I don't know when the previous previous owners put it in, um, but it was here. And it, I didn't I didn't see any water in it. For, for two to three years. So, which leads me to believe that this was, and you can even see when, you know, when we bought this house, this, this was not classic, there was no wetland designation back there, it's not on a PNS. It was, it was not classified. So, I, I wouldn't have entertained that the thought of buying the house near a wetland because it was a lot of making <laughs> The father used to get it when I was growing up. So, and I'd have to note it was the details. But we, to that point, the water was not here. The, the work, the water, the, the back of the yard is not usable. The grass that was there, I can't even stand on it. Most of the times we have to cut it now with a weed whacker because it's, it's, you, you, you melt into the soil. It, it's really just, it, it's just. It's really frustrating, um, and and 
I, I, we really need belief. I, I mean, this is, it's really. Like that was talked about at the last meeting. Mr. Cohen had said something about what about the neighbors that have been affected already by this water from the people that chopped down 66 trees without a permit. So that, that's the frustration on our part because I didn't even know that we were even supposed to ask if they had a permit while they took the trees. The arborist came up to me and said, hey, I was supposed to pull a permit, but I didn't. And you better go to the town of Con the conservation and see what they can do to help you. I haven't had a chance to speak yet. I'm the neighbor behind, and I just wanted to voice our concerns as well. This is a family home, um, and the family has lived in this property for 37 years, and we have not seen the water that we have seen post the trees being taken down. Um, so it's a it's a big problem. And seeing this proposal, to me, it just increases what I already see as a problem in the backyard of, you know, a, a huge water. And I, I understand that those people would like to have a nice lawn, um, but at the expense of neighbors having flooding, two adjacent neighbors having flooding doesn't seem like the real solution here. Um, I have young kids and it's been dangerous with how deep this water has gotten. Um, now with proposed additional paving and a trench that's gonna be directed backwards towards the rear and creating even more um, of a water issue that we can see. I, I do like the idea of accommodating this additional flooding of potentially expanding and capturing some of this water. I don't think it should just continue to be re redirected onto somebody else's property and creating water that has not existed for 40 years. And I know there's been a lot of um, construction and different things in this, this area, but it was nothing like this. And it, it all has happened at the, at the expense of these neighbors right now. And I don't feel like that's being addressed. Uh, what, what is your name, please, so we can have a record? Kristen Brady, 13 Pleasant. Okay, I think you were here last time in January. Yes, I was. And and okay. we just we just went through this again in the spring. The water was really bad. Again, I just see this proposal of increasing that problem for us. Yes. And I just think a few shots is going to even touch the issue that we're dealing with as neighbors. All right. Is there anyone else in the audience? May I address that comment to the commission? Please do, Laurie. Okay. So interestingly enough, when I've been out on my client's property and um, we went back out in June 8th. We saw that the backyard does pond quite a bit. Um, and I stood on one of the stumps and I looked beyond the property to Miss Brady's property and she installed a sports court directly behind my, my client's fence that's causing the water problems, that's causing this water to pond onto my client's property. And as far as I know, I haven't seen a permit pulled for that work. It's in violations of the Wetland Protection Act and the local regulations. So it's just interesting to me that I'm hearing a lot of concerns about flooding when people are putting asphalt right next to a wetland and pushing more water onto my client's property. All right. So, would anyone like to, like to respond to that, Ms. Brady? Something that my husband just did, and there's nothing that affected the water has just increased to our property. Okay. So there's there's nothing. Ours is le completely level. We have a level. There's a pitch coming down from that property coming to our lot. It's a complete steep pitch, and everything that's being proposed is going to completely pitch it back to us. So it's just moving the water where it never existed. There's never water here. I disagree with that and I recommend the commission to go out and take a look at this because this is a violation. My client is guilty as charged. We're here tonight to fix this issue, but I just find it so ironic that I hear concerns from the neighbors about drainage and they're causing more water on my client's property. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, thank you all for all those comments. Uh, uh, John, I'd like to suggest to the, you and the commission and to Eileen that uh, one is that uh, what I see as what's left here to look at is we consider ways of taking up additional water in the back and Maureen from North Environmental said she would agree to look at that. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, the second is 
Uh, someone suggested a site visit. If the commission or John, you think it might be useful to take another site visit, uh, we can do that before the next meeting. And number three, uh, for uh, to uh, Maureen, uh, I'm wondering, and to the commission, I'm wondering whether uh, a good gesture towards reducing the amount of water would be some type of uh, pervious pavement instead of impervious surface for the asphalt paving. I'm wondering if possibly, um, I mean, if you're going to be digging it up for to pave it, you can dig it up and make it, you know, using the pervious pavement. I can speak to my client about that. All right. And maybe you can evaluate that and see if uh, that might help reduce the water to uh, going towards the back. Uh, so Larry, I just want to say, Maureen, um, you know, I have a, a pervious uh, driveway. I've had it for 10 years without any need of repair. It's awesome. Okay. Okay. Uh, I am uh, in favor of a site visit. I would like to ask permission if we can get it from the Callahan and Brady families, if we could go on their property and look at the whole, the whole bigger picture. Absolutely. We welcome you to come out to the backyard to see it. Okay. I agree with that, Bill. Zed, I clearly would want to go visit those properties. It's, it's not just the one uh, piece of property we're dealing with here. It's got to be a remedy of some sort. And you won't Are there anyone else here to speak, Larry? Um, not that I know of. If not, the next meeting is July 9th. Uh, we also uh, uh, we also have that uh, a revision to the drawing. We seem to have agreed for some additional drainage to be extended along uh, the property line there. Is that correct? Yes, and I'll look into the other suggestions the commission mentioned this evening. Yeah, All right, John or Eileen, any further comment on this project before we go on it? No, we'll try to put together a site visit. Okay, next meeting is July 9th, and uh, we'll, we'll plan to continue this discussion at that time. If uh, it would help expedite things, if you have uh, revisions, if you can get it to us uh, five to seven days in advance, it probably would help. I will do that. Thank you. All right, Larry, everyone. Yes, Larry, you should do a, do a roll call to continue. All right, I'd like to have a motion uh, to continue this project until July 9th. Uh, is there a motion? So moved, Ed. Second, Don. Okay, Don, how do you vote? Yes, continue. Gail? Yes. Kendra? Yes. Paul? Yes. Ed? Yes. Kent? Okay, you're not, you're not voting, okay. So, uh, and I vote yes, so it's six zero zero. Got it. Okay, so we'll see you on July 9th. Great, thank you very much. All right, thank you all. Have a good fourth. You too. Thank you. All right, uh, we're on item, uh, a continued public hearing. Uh, this is a public hearing for uh, the Redmond Street Roadway uh, uh, proposed by Somerset Realty for the construction of a new road with stream crossing and the DEP number is pending. Uh, does it make sense to talk about uh, the uh, lot four being proposed and lot five all at once, John? Yes, yeah, so yeah, the time has passed where you can open all, you can open all three hearings now. We, we do have file numbers for them too. Um, all they right. came so in after the agenda was published. So this is a continued public hearing also that was open at the last meeting, a notice of intent for four Redmond Street, again by Somerset Realty Trust, and that's to construct a new single family dwelling on a lot that would be created. And then we have item number nine, which is a notice of intent, five Redmond Street, Somerset Realty Trust, and that's for a construction of a new single family dwelling on a new lot, five Redmond Street, that would be uh, constructed. Somebody here for that project? Yes, I am. Mary Trudeau. All right, Ms. Trudeau. Okay. Uh, Phyllis, is muted. Phyllis is on too. She was muted. Phyllis Etzel is with me as well this evening, as well as William Rudolph from Murray Hills Real Estate as well. 
Um, for the record, my name is Mary Trudeau, and I'm representing Somerset Realty Trust this evening in the filing of these three notices of intent for the development of a two-lot subdivision off the north end of Redmond Street. Um, the property is located between two paper streets. Um, one is Redmond Street, the other is Raymond Ave, and has no frontage currently on any public way. The proposal that we have in front of you would create a subdivision with roadway off of Redmond Way, creating access and frontage for each of the two lots that would be built, one to the east and one to the west of the new roadway. Um, this lot has extensive wetlands on it. Um, the plans that we've submitted to you, you'll see that there are two distinct systems of wetland, the B series of wetlands and the C series of wetlands. Both of those systems are bordering vegetated wetlands um, and have a preponderance of wetlands vegetation, hydric soils, and appropriate wetlands hydrology. The B series of wetlands has a very distinct stream channel that runs through it. And the C series wetlands is more like a headwater situation, um, which is gathering water and flowing off to the north. Um, the, I don't believe there is as well a defined series uh, section of stream bank in that area, but both of them are clearly bordering vegetated wetlands. The proposal that we have in front of you to create the subdivision roadway requires the alteration of 40. 257 square feet of bordering vegetated wetlands. The, product, the most of the wetlands alteration is located in the B series of flags. There is a small finger of wetlands off the C series of flags um, that would also require alteration to construct the roadway as we have proposed it. The project, despite being only a two lot subdivision, has been designed to meet the stormwater management regulations that the DEP has promulgated. Um, and the project as a whole reduces both the peak runoff and the volume of stormwater generated on the site through the use of infiltration within the roadway and dry wells on each of the lots. Um, and the, the stormwater has been managed for both of the lots as well as the roadway, despite being less than the four unit subdivision um, that's called out by the DEP. The wetlands crossing will require a DEP Army Corps of Engineer compliant crossing. The plans that we have submitted to you show an aluminum culvert being used to pass the stream and flows through the B series of wetlands. In discussions recently with the town of Burlington, it became apparent that your highway department, your DPW and the engineering department would prefer a concrete culvert rather than the aluminum. And that change will be made as soon as our engineer, David Romero, returns from vacation. Um, another of the comments that we received from the town concerned the co possible consolidation of the stormwater management units. And again, that is something that we will look at when David returns. I think that it may well be very possible to do that and centralize it so that we would only have one infiltration system that managed the runoff from lots four, lots five, and the roadway itself. Um, we also have had a comment from your Conservation Commission that asked us about whether access off of Raymond Street would require less wetlands alteration than the currently proposed access off the end of Redmond Street. Um, we have not fully flagged that area, but we did look at using Raymond Street Front, the Raymond Street footprint of the roadway to bring our sewer line in because it would have allowed us to have gravity flow sewer. And when we did the calculations for that, we found that we altered more wetlands 
coming in off Raymond Street than we did by running the sewer through Redmond Street and having um, force mains or pump stations associated with each of the houses. Um, so that so that is something that we will take a more careful look at and get you calculations showing what would be the proposed alteration if we were to access the site from Raymond Street as opposed to the Redmond Street crossing that we have proposed. This filing for the roadway alteration has been proposed as a limited project because we don't feel that we have an alternative upland access that gives us frontage um, and access to the two house lots. And we had proposed that rather than constructing a wetlands replication area to mitigate for the 4,257 square feet of bordering vegetated wetlands, we would donate a, an adjacent parcel of land that's under the same um, ownership as this to the Conservation Commission to add to your holdings of conservation land in this area. We received an initial set of comments from DEP today when they issued their file number and the comment implied that the project cannot move forward unless the wetlands are replicated for. We actually have looked at that alternative um, and we had chosen not to go forward with it because of the extensive tree clearing and earthwork that would be required. But we have talked internally and we'd like to reach out to DEP and make sure that they understand that this is a limited project which doesn't necessarily mandate replication and make sure that that is not an acceptable alternative, that the gift of land would not suffice. Um, so this evening I don't have a firm answer to that, but the area that we had proposed to locate the replication area would parallel Raymond Ave if you're looking at the um, site plan and run through that triangular parcel of land that's kind of at the top of your plan sheet. And we had looked to try and do two to one mitigation for the loss, because that's typically what your commission has required when doing a wetlands replication area. And it was very tight to get that amount of acreage in there because um, the land is limited, but it was more the extensive tree clearing that would that was daunting to us. And we've shown you all of the trees on the site plan and the dimensions of them, of the trees that would have to be required um, for removal. So. But for the, your next meeting with us, we will have prepared a plan showing you what a wetlands replication area would look like on this site that had um, ideally two to one mitigation, but certainly one and a half or one to one mitigation. Um, David Romero, our project engineer, is not here this evening to talk to you in more detail about the stormwater management system, but we have anticipated that this hearing will be continued at least once, and David will return. Um, we had also talked internally with our team about a site visit that we would like to have the commission come out and look at the site. It's incredibly densely vegetated right now and almost impenetrable. And to, so to do a site visit, we would like permission to cut a, a transect, almost like a sidewalk right down the center line of the proposed roadway that would allow the commission to both view the crossing area as well as adjacent parts of the site. Some portions of the site are really nice and open. Um, unfortunately, where the roadway is proposed is almost impenetrable and without cutting, I, I don't think we could get through it at this time of year. Um, with that, I think I would like to open this up for questions. All right, I'm back. Okay. Not anymore. All right, so, uh, John, uh, do you see any other issues, or Eileen, that you, at this point, I know it's early because it's really the first time we've heard this description. Um, you have issues you would like to table that need more exploration? 
Okay, so first of all, I'd just like to explain for the vet to the for the benefit of the conservation commissioners who don't know what the limited project is. So under the under the regulations of the Wetlands Protection Act, um, 10, 310 CMR ten point fifty three E is a is a, a, a section of the regulations that gives call it's a special project for accessing an upland area that can only be accessed by crossing a wetland. And so that's that's one type of special project that's permitted under under the regulations. You're allowed to allow, you you could allow more than five thousand square feet of filling for a limited project, and you don't technically need to require replication under a limited project. Um, the thing is that this is a subdivision. So the reason the DEP is requiring replication, it requires the four hundred one water quality certification. Whenever there's wetland filling in, in association with a subdivision, it requires a water quality cert from the DEP, and they have no flexibility on the replication there. It's a federal permit. So that's why they're requiring it. Um, so that's that. Um, it, the combination of the dense vegetation and the fact that I've been under the weather, I have not looked at the wetland delineation at all. Eileen has gone out there and taken a peek, but um, I haven't had a chance. Um, I think we certainly need more replicate, uh, more delineation done, um, particularly in an area where they're going to be proposing replication, just to be to make sure that um, the replication is um, adjacent to a wetland or and isn't a wetland already, um, and also in the the Raymond Road area, so that we can evaluate. So one of the things about the limited project is you can allow the wetland crossing, but it has to be at the point where it ha is, has the least impact on the wetlands. So if it turns out that they could come in the other way and fill 3,000 square foot of wetlands instead of four, um, then we would tell them to come in the other way. Um, there's, a, there's a number of other things. There's um, the, the wetland crossing doesn't re use any retaining walls. So they slope um, right down to the edge of the right of way, which, um, if it were to become a town road, would probably be the only way it would be uh, allowed because the, the engineering department would not support retaining walls within the right of way. But if this were to be a private roadway, and that's still to be, be determined, you know, between the, the applicants and the planning board, um, then the commission may want to reduce the wetland impact by ha having less slope on the side of the roadway and walls. Um, the two NOIs for the lots are, are much more straightforward than the NOI for the roadway. Um, and I think um, there'll be a lot of, lot of um, discussion at the planning board regarding cul-de-sacs and whatnot. So I, I, and the planning board does not meet again until um, after your July 9th meeting. So, um, so there's no point in continuing this and uh, you know to, to to the July 9 meeting i would go to august okay thank you john uh so uh i'd like to go through uh our commissioners and associate commissioner and see if other issues come up so we can have them on the table all right so let's uh let's go in reverse order uh Kent, uh, do you have anything at this point? Uh, not at this point, no. All right. Ed? I was out there today, so I have to concur with the finding that um, uh, some sort of a path created to just get visibility through there. It is really uh, well grown up in that. Uh, a lot of shrubs and a lot of uh, invasive series in there, too. But I would suggest that just so we could get in to see it. Yeah, I tried to blaze a trail like Lewis and Clark, but I failed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Bill. Uh, yeah, one of the questions I have involves the proposed. Oh, I lost it. Uh, the proposed infiltration system. Um, it's talking about the bottom of the, the level. Uh, of which the stone is located is at 142, and yet I see adjacent wetlands at 142, and even at 146 on the other side. So I don't envision how the infiltration can possibly work on that site, unless I'm missing something. 
Oh. Um, this is Phyllis. Um, I'd like to say that David uh, Romero, the engineer, has already looked at uh, relocating the infiltration system so that when you see the plan again, um, you may not have that uh, issue. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Uh, Bill, anything else? Uh, I hate sites like this. I don't think they should be developed, but the rules say they can. It's just my personal feeling. It's, it, it should be left alone. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, Indra? Uh, no, I don't have anything at this point. Uh, Gail? Uh, I agree that we have to uh, look at the site. Um, I, I would like to see if there's a way we can minimize the amount of wetland that's being disturbed here. Um, it really does seem, um, you know, as being part of a conservation commission that's supposed to protect wetlands, uh, just uh, disagreeable to cut through so much of it. Uh, okay, uh, Don. Um, there's still obviously a lot of discovery that uh, needs to be done. Um, I would suggest that um, we pull up a an, an image on Google Earth of the exact area and. Uh, and go through it very carefully, it should reveal a lot of information we would never see in the ground. That's a very good point. Thank you. Okay. Excuse me, are you going to hear from the uh, the public uh, at, at this we point? Won't be, we, yes, we, we will absolutely get there. Uh, just hang tight for about five more minutes. Okay, great. Sorry. This okay, we always, <laughs> no, that's, no, we always do give the public an opportunity. Uh, unless I forget to say something, but then the other commissioners jump on me and we normally get to it. Great, thank you. Uh, all right, so I, I had a, a couple of questions. Uh, um, uh, you, you, the COVID crossing is crossing, a, I mean, the, the, the crossing of ones is crossing a stream, is that true? Yes, yeah. the, the B series of wetlands contains a stream. And uh, Ms. Trudeau, we're also planning to uh, uh, lose wetlands as part of that crossing prior to that crossing. Is that correct? We're going to lose wetlands. Well, we're going to lose wetlands at the crossing and then on the at the far end of the road, where it is like a little bit of a T, we have grading that there's a finger-like projection of bordering vegetated wetlands that comes into that grading. And it's kind of like a little stippled area okay. um, below the infiltration system. Those are the two areas that we would lose wetland. But the stream is not the entire width of the B series wetland. So there's bordering vegetated wetlands on either shoulder of the stream that will be beneath the crossing. So my question is a concern about losing some of the hydrology from one side to the net and the other. On one side, we have a large wetland uh, of that crossing, and the other, we have a smaller wetland on the B side, it seems. I'm wondering, are we going to lose some of the hydrology flow, even though the stream is crossing, but there's wetlands on both sides? Are we going to lose some of the water feed going across right now? I, uh, David Romero will have to speak to this because he was responsible for the sizing of the culvert, which includes the opening. And when you size the opening, you have to look at um, several features, including the flow of the water being passed, the size of the stream that's beneath it, um, as well as there's an openness ratio um, that you have to have a certain height to the crossing. And I think you can better speak to that. Yeah, well, please tell Mr. Romero the question is whether uh, we're going to, you know, I haven't seen the site because I couldn't get in there, but I'm wondering whether we're going to lose some of the hydrology going from one side of the crossing to the other. Typically, you design it so that does not happen, that you are able to pass the flows. Um, you know, they do a watershed analysis. But again, David's going to have to speak to you about that. Okay. Uh, Second of all, uh, are, you, are you proposing a a conservation restriction uh, on the uh, east side of the property there, behind number, behind number three? 
Are we proposing a... I see on the drawing a conservation restriction. Okay. Uh, Larry, Larry, that's the that's the conservation restriction for McSweeney Way. Okay, so that's not proposed as part of this. It's already yours. Well, it okay. will be. It's not yet, but it will be for McSweeney Way. Okay. Uh, what we are proposing to uh, donate uh, adjoins the restriction the uh, land that um, we bought uh, for the uh, conservation restriction. Right. It's on the other side of that. Right. And, uh, uh, John, the question, this is for you, John, this question. Are we obligated to permit both houses under the limited project, or is it discretionary to minimize the amount of wetland disturbance? The limited project is strictly for the crossing. It's not for the houses. And so are we obligated to permit? I mean, if they were to come in off a Raymond Road on the dry area, they could permit one house versus two. So it's not clear yet whether coming in from Raymond Road would be less wetlands. They need, they need, to, they need to show us that. They're, they're saying that it would be more wetlands to come in from Raymond Road. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see it because according to this drawing, there's less off of right. Right, getting right in, right. so I don't know. That's so they're, they're, but they're saying there's more wetlands they haven't flagged. Larry, right, this is Bill. Doesn't it look like there's access feasible directly through upland to that uh, Raymond Road? From one house, from house number four? Yeah, it does look like there's an access for one house off of Raymond Road. It, it, it too would require a wetlands crossing though if you my flagging stopped at our property line but the wetlands continue across raymond road okay. at that point okay I, I think that john is correct that we really need to go out there and finish flagging the areas adjacent to our property to give you a better answer on which crossing requires more alteration uh also to the uh, proponents i think it would be helpful to the commission if we could distribute larger paper copies because right now i'm looking at an eight and a half by 11 and no matter how much i script i can barely see it we can do that we already have them i just um would need to be told how to deliver them Right. So, uh, actually, this is Gail. I'm okay with the electronic copy. I can zoom in on that. I uh, don't need the paper copy. Yeah, same here. I can zoom as big as I want. Yeah, may maybe that's what I didn't do with Zoom. <laughs> Me too. I can also zoom. And then how do I get them to town hall? Is it now open? Uh, no, but I can be you, so I'll just call me. Okay. All right. Uh, Larry, I had a couple more comments when I can. Yes, please do. Uh, two, two things. One is, uh, if there is a culvert, this does get approved, and there's a culvert to be installed for the stream, I think it's important to uh, plan the size of the culvert to not just be a cement tube with the water, that there's enough, there's some dry land on either side within the culvert for the passage of small animals without having to cross the road. Uh, so know, Bill, this this is designed to meet the stream crossing standards done by the Army uh, Corps of Engineers. Is that part of the design? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, and then the other question I have is if the um, replication is not necessary and you are allowed to donate the other property, I'd like some kind of feedback from John and Eileen as to whether they feel an assessment of whether the value of that donated property property is at least equal to, if not greater than, the stuff that we'd be giving up for in wetlands in this fill. Are you talking, Bill, are you talking in the event of one house versus two? No, I'm saying if the two houses get approved and the road gets approved and wetlands get filled and the compensation is that they're donating the other property, I'd like to be reassured that the donated property is of at least the same value, environmental value, in John's okay. in Eileen's opinion. I think that's moot. I think the, the replication is going to be required by DEP, so. Okay. And that would be on site. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Time to uh, see if there's anyone here from the audience, which I know of one 
person. Uh, could you identify your, yourself by name and your location, please? Yeah, thanks for uh, taking the time to hear me. Appreciate it. My name is uh, Tony Gallione. Uh, I live at 2 Redmond Street, so I'm basically going to be the you know the neighbor of uh, whoever's going to be at 4 and 5 Redmond Street. So um, I uh, purchased this house. Um, we moved in in March, so I'm a new uh, member of the Burlington community. We love the, the town and city so far, so really appreciate all the efforts you guys are going through. Uh, glad to see that there's a dedicated uh, you know, um, conservation commission and people are considering, uh, things like this. So, so just want to thank you guys for that. Um, so I, I guess I'm just going to get straight to the point. I'm not really a, a fan of this, uh, type of development. I'm not fan of, uh, of, um, developments being made and in conservation land. Uh, my wife and I are all, all about conservation and preservation, and uh, it just doesn't make sense to me why, uh, you know, how how we're allowing development on conservation land. What's the point of having conservation land if we're going to develop it? I mean, I'm all for development uh, and <laughs> and the advancement of society, but um, but it, uh, I think there are better ways to do it than than this. So uh, I did have a couple questions. You guys answered a lot of my questions, so I appreciate that. Um, you know, about the, uh, you know, the donation of, uh, you know, or, or replication of, of existing wetlands. So uh, that was one thing. Uh, so, my, so my house is, it appears that my house will possibly be more at risk to flooding by reducing the wetlands around my house and increasing asphalt and raising the water table with development. So uh, what assurances are there, are there going to be that are made by the developer that my property won't be negatively affected in this way? Uh, any comment from anyone? John or Eileen, do you want to, anybody want to address that? So this is not conservation land, correct? No, it's privately it's owned. Lands. Right. So this is not conservation land. This is um, federally and state regulated. Oh. We don't own it. You know, it's private land. Uh, the reason why they have to come to us is because anytime someone does something uh, close to a wetland, a stream, or a river, um, there are uh, local, state, and federal regulations about whether you can build or not build. So um, I just want to be clear, because I think every one of us would not be giving up conservation land to development. Um, so it, it, it's just the reason they come to us is because it's their restrictions to, to developing these areas. Um, that's the thing I just want to make clear. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is Bill, another conservation commissioner. Um, another thing that we require them to do is to show calculations that the total amount of water running off of the site and the rate at which water runs off the site is not increased during this development. So they have, that's why they're putting in their retention chamber to hold some of that water. Uh, they cannot make the water flow off of the property worse in the design, and that's one of the things that we will be looking for. So one of the questions Larry asked before about the crossing and the, uh, the culvert, whether or not that would impact uh, hydrology on either side of the new road. Um, so that 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 wetland is closest to your house. And that's a, that's a question to be answered by their engineer, who unfortunately isn't here this evening and presumably will be at the next meeting. OK. All right, thank you. Um, one other question. So, so my neighbor, I've noticed uh, at three Red Redmond Street already has major sewer issues. Uh, I've been here three months so far, and he's already had uh, plumbing and pumping going on. He's had plumbers trucks out there at least once every three weeks for the last three months. So, um, I, sewer sewer issues already appear to be a major issue at the end of Redmond Street uh, already. So, um, just you know, want to make a note of that and. Uh, and I know, you know, the sewer issues were already kind of brought up earlier, but um, just want to bring that to, you know, the commission's attention and the developer's attention, just so that that is uh, already a situation that could likely be exacerbated by this development as well. Larry, I just want another thing for um, this abutter. So you, um, are you probably aware that th this plan, um, when it comes to conservation to, um, you know, regulate uh, uh, according to the, the laws of, about uh, wetlands and streams, 
Um, but this also has to go to the planning board, which um, deals with, you know, the creating a new um, development, that kind of thing, and zoning and so forth. And then I assume this will also go to the Board of Health. Is that correct, uh, John? Yes. And so they, I would think they would have something to do with sewage. <laughs> okay. All right. So it, my last question then would just be, uh, so it looks like the plans have uh, two, you know, lot sized lots of wetlands uh, on Redmond immediately next door to me at two Redmond and my neighbor at three Redmond. So uh, the lot, the basically the wetlands uh, that aren't being developed right now at four and five uh, proposed to be developed looks like possibly could be, you know, sized for lots in the future for potential development now that they're going to be putting in a road possibly, uh, you know, between Redmond and Raymond. So um, basically, what's to stop that from happening once this road extension is installed? And now that this is like, a, 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 I guess there are, I mean, I'm not well versed in, you know, everything that you guys are, but it seems to me that there um, are, you know, uh, different, you know, rules and regulations for a limited development versus, you know, something maybe possibly more than two houses. So I don't know if the plan in the future is after these two houses are already built that sometime in the future, they'll come back and ask for two additional houses under limited regulations as well. And that's kind of a way to subvert asking for four house development right now, uh, but eventually getting it in the future. Uh, this is uh, Commissioner Deb. I just want to mention one thing to you that uh, we are here and we have to follow the laws rules and regulations, wetland regulations. So if somebody comes up with and comply with the, our regulations, then we have to approve the project. I hope you understand that. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, to the neighbor who, uh, the person at two uh, uh, Redmond, uh, I'd suggest that one of the things you may want to talk uh, at the planning board about the potential for additional lots. It looks to me like there's, and Phyllis, you may want to comment that there's not enough dry land to add in any more lots given the wetlands I see here on the plan. No, there is not. There is, uh, these are the last two lots. And as you see, uh, lot is at number, number five. Uh, is uh, on the un uh, one side is on the undeveloped side of Raymond Road, and actually, what I wanted to say is both of these these lots currently exist. They are lots. Um, number five was recently created uh, when we uh, developed the lot on McSweeney Way. That was a part of that lot, and it was divided by A and R. So this is an existing five is an existing lot. However, it does not have a, uh, improved frontage. And that's what we were looking for on, um, on uh, Redmond Street. Uh, for uh, Redmond Street uh, is a lot that has been in existence many, many years, maybe 40, 50 years. So that is also an existing lot, and, uh, but it does not have uh, paved frontage on a developed street. And that's why we're looking to develop uh, Redmond Street. But there is no room uh, or no area beyond that that can be developed. If you look at the uh, map, you'll see the wetlands extend into Raymond Road. And another issue with Raymond Road is that um, uh, there's zoned wetlands. Uh, there's a, a large finger of, of zoned wetlands uh, that is down uh, uh, Raymond Road and extends um, to the in, into the intersection uh, of Raymond Road with uh, uh, Redmond Street, and that could be an issue. Um, that is zoned wetlands, and uh, uh, last I knew, is it, can, we, it cannot be developed. Uh, you cannot develop on it unless the zoned wetlands is removed from the maps whether it's wetland or not. If it's zoned wetlands, it's con it's on the maps and considered um, not buildable. So okay. that's an issue uh, with coming in on uh, Redmond Street. Otherwise, I mean, we would have no problem with it um, 
it certainly would make it easier to uh, provide sewer by gravity to both those lots. So it would have been our preference to come in that way, but we will look at it again. Okay. But it certainly would be preferable than coming in from right. the um, last developed piece of uh, Redmond Street. Okay. So, okay. so, so, so you just said that. Uh, Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was my. Maybe you just answered my next. My last question was why. Why do you have to connect Redmond and Raymond Street? And it, it was that your answer that it's. We're not connecting Redmond and Raymond Street. We're not connecting them. Oh, you're not. No, we're not proposing to. It, it would be. It would be good if we could. Um. We'll look at it again, but there is zoned wetlands on on Raymond Road. And it extends down uh, beyond Redmond Street. And uh, it may be that we can't cross over it. And then the other issue is that the uh, wetlands may be so extensive that it would be disturbing more wetlands to um, come in from Raymond Road. Okay. Uh, a, a couple of other points when Mr. Romero is back, uh, I'd be interested in the elevator. You have an infiltrator uh, after the crossing, I gather. Is that what that's shown? Yes. He's okay. So, so I'd be interested in the infiltrator elevation at the bottom, whether there's sufficient clearance to groundwater elevation, a couple of feet at least. Larry, we already discussed that. They're moving that. Oh, they are? Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, the other question I have is, uh, would, uh, John, would previous pavement anywhere here in the construction uh, create lesser impacts at all, in your opinion? Um, well, the problem is that if I, it, it's so hard to enforce the maintenance of those, you know, to prevent people from using seal coating and whatnot. Um, I just don't think it's a practical solution on something like this. All right. Uh, and the last question is, uh, can we get uh, your engineer to quantify that if it was kept as a private road and we had a wall, how much wetlands would be saved? Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll get that. All right. Is there anything else from anyone? Any other people in the audience? There isn't a butter. Mr. Conti? Good, good evening. Uh, my name's Ron Conti. I'm at uh, One Redmond. Uh, thank you for uh, taking my questions. Um, I was reviewing the uh, document uh, notice of intent for the stormwater report, and I see two standards, standard nine, standard 10 operations operation and maintenance plan says one has been a manual has been prepared uh what is the conservation commission's position on once when a, such a manual is prepared for a, a, since a homeowners association of some sort will manage it how is that enforced and inspected to make sure that this gets gets done and is there a copy of that plan that's available for us to see john would you like to comment or eileen there's certainly a there certainly will be a copy of it you to, for you to see, um, but I will admit our enforcement of um, making sure that those O and M plans are actually um, followed is is uneven. Um, so, on larger projects, we you know we frequently require annual reports, inspection reports for, for smaller things like this. Um, we don't always, and so we don't always get uh, compliance with the following of the O&M plan, to be honest. Um, it's so, it's so not then, clear at this point whether it'll be a homeowners association or if this is going to be a public street, although almost certainly if there's an underground infiltration system, it won't be in the right of way and it will be up to a property owner to take care of. So then if, there, if my property is affected or three Redmonds affected, or two for that matter, uh, by the homeowners association, as it's stated here, not maintaining that system. Who is accountable for that? 
Uh, my my reaction is, sir, that 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 would be end up being a you would be consulting a lawyer, and you would institute a civil action with damages. I assume. Uh, that to be perfectly honest, I don't really know, but I'm assuming that's what would happen. Okay, that that, that doesn't sound like that. There's much um, strength behind that. Then. Um. Uh, I'm not sure I have a further comment on it, to be honest with you. Unless someone else. So, if you mean, correct me if I'm wrong, this Gail. If um, so, if there was a home uh, O&M plan that was public, and say a neighbor um, saw that, you know, salt being used on the roadway, which would be prohibited because it's, there's a wetland there, and, and so forth, that um, you could contact the conservation office and, I mean. I, and the conservation office could get in touch with the homeowners association and you know, either decide that that's a violation and they'd be fined or they'd have to you know come in and correct it and so forth so you know there is that level but if we don't know about it then you know there's no uh, conservation police that are uh, checking on it um and so we rely on you know kind of know if there's something in violation if, if uh, uh, the agent can see it um, and then secondly if it became a public road it would be the responsibility of the town uh, to um, take on those things also uh, John does the Board of Health still have their drainage permit yes yes they do all right and well one suggestion I have for this gentleman is that uh, one of the purposes, as I understand it, of the drainage permit by the Board of Health, uh, and anyone can correct me if I'm wrong, is to take up matters regarding uh, how water is actually hurting the property of others. In other words, if a certain property allows water to run off onto someone else's property, uh, the Board of Health uh, sometimes gets involved in after the fact effects of that, and you could get on their agenda or go to citizens' time and ask for some guidance on what could be done. I would also recommend you attend the, uh, the next meeting uh, when, when there are project engineers here. He should be able to answer some of these questions. Okay, will the O&M plan be available for that next meeting? Um, it's available. I'm not sure. So, well, he's, so he's re redesigning the drainage system. So, I mean, I think he did one initially, but the drainage is being redesigned. So he'll have to redesign his O&M. Okay, I thought I heard somebody say it's available now, but I, I, I did not see it. So I, I, maybe I'm missing it in this NOI document, if, if that's what it is. But it, is, it wasn't attached to the agenda. It's usually in the stormwater plan, so that may not have been on the website. So it was not the What's that? I'm sorry. Uh, John, so how can this gentleman get a copy of it? Well, I can put the stormwater report up on the website with the other documents. But once again, the O&M plan will probably be revised if the drainage system is being revised. It's being moved out of the roadway, so it will be revised. But I'll, I'll put it up on the website with the other documents. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to uh, make some comments? Is there anyone else from the commission that would like to make some comments? John or Eileen? Can I just interject a little something? I met both Ron and um, Tony, I think, on site a few days ago when I was out there. And I think that sometimes especially people from other towns, we don't always use the same words for things. I think Tony meant, when he said conservation area, he meant wetland. And also when he said sewer, I think he actually meant storm, storm the drainage system, because I, I've, I've met various neighbors who said how flooding and stormwater has been an issue in around the neighboring properties, especially I think number three, Redmond. So I just wanted to, to say that. Yes, you're right. Thanks, Eileen, for that correction. I appreciate that. This is Tony. <laughs> okay. If there's nothing further, when is uh, Mr. Jeff Chairman? Jeff? Yes. Uh, this is this is Commissioner uh, <clears throat> Dave. I just want to mention one more thing for the neighbor. 
that uh, <clears throat> we also uh, the conservation commission looks at the uh, project that is there will be will there be any adversely affect uh, on the neighbor's property i just wanted to mention to the neighbor that we do look into that right thank, thank you indra good point mm -hmm. uh all right is there uh if there's nothing further it was suggested that it might be useful to reconvene and continue this meeting uh until uh the meeting in august anyone comment on that i think that's acceptable to us that we would request a continuance until the august meeting of the burlington conservation commission all right what's what's the date of that meeting john august 13. august 13. all right could i have a motion to uh uh continue this meeting table this meeting until august the august 13th meeting is there such a motion so, so wait to just clarify just to clarify you're continuing three public hearings yeah yes please. all three public hearings so moved this is bill second this is indra all right uh don how do you vote uh yes gail yes Indra? Yes. Bill? Yes. Ed? Yes. Chair votes yes, six zero zero. Okay, so we will uh, hear some more information from uh, Mr. Romero, your engineer, at that time, and we will have the benefit of you folks having gone through a planning board meeting. Thank you. And All right. Just one one thing. So if you're going to go out there and cut a path, just you're going to just use like a, a machete or something, right? No, equ no equipment. Right yeah, there, I right? was just thinking like just a footpath right down the center line of the roadway. Okay. Nothing okay. elaborate. OK, that would be helpful. And Dawn, are you going to uh, set up a sidewalk prior to your next meeting? We'll try. Yes. OK. Be, yeah. be prior to the August meeting. Prior yeah. to the August meeting, so we won't do any cutting until we hear from you. Okay. Right. Okay? One, more, one more thing before we vote: Is the applicant clear on what more uh, wetland delineation is needed, John or Eileen? I, I think so. Um, I just want to tell Mary that I, I've been out there and I, I saw quite a lot of the flags. Number one, the C flag series eleven was torn, twelve was on the ground. I couldn't find 13 and 14, so you just might need to check a few of those when you're out there. We'll do that. We'll have them replaced by the surveyors. Okay, I think and there is a motion on the floor. Is that correct? Has that been voted on? Yes, it was. Yes, you already took the vote. We already took the vote. Okay. Thanks, Don. Oh. All right. So we'll see you August 13th. Yes. Yep. Be well. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Have a have a good fourth. You at home. Stay healthy. Thank you. All right. Take care, folks. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. All right. So where are we now? We have. I think we're at the end of the major part of the agenda. Do we have any planning board comments? Uh, Honor Eileen. Um, we may comment on this project to the planning board. Yeah, I mean, I think the issue of having a wall to minimize may minimize uh, having it, uh, you know, a not a public road may be of interest. The comment may be of interest to them because there is an incentive to save some wetlands. Right. Uh, are there other comments that? Anybody feels should be made to the planning board? I mentioned. Okay. Uh, then it's yeah. You are certainly at your discretion, John and Eileen. Okay. Uh, subcommittee and staff reports and updates. Is there anything we should talk about? I don't have anything. All right. Uh, 
okay. Has anybody been to a walk up at Mill Pond lately? I've been up there a few times. It's it's fairly nice up there. I have not been there in a while. Me either. All right. Well, you might want to take a walk up there if you want something different. It's very nice up there still. We still have water in Mill Pond. Uh, also, so I have a question for Bill. Uh, Bill, this is not conservation related, but you know, is the town planning on sending out mailings about the water ban? Because I think there's a lot of people who don't have a reverse nine one one and don't have the message. Uh, I don't know. They, I, you know, they use the reverse nine one one. They have the sign down in the center of town there. That electronic sign is lit, flashing the rules. Right. The so there are a lot of people that you know. I'm not sure how much they are driving around and. And uh, I just know, without saying names, <laughs> there are um, you know a lot of people that are not uh, following things, and I'm not sure they actually are on the one list. But I don't know if a town meeting uh, member, that's something you guys uh, discuss. Uh, I can find out if there's going to be any other notifications, but and right now it's still uh, other than even odd stuff. The rest of it is still a request and not an order, to my knowledge. It's up on the web page. I think we're down to twice a week now. Yeah, Tuesday and Saturday. A lot of Saturday, yeah. Tuesday and Saturday between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. I got a reverse a 911 call, and it said you could uh, use uh, yeah, devices between that time. It didn't say sprinklers. It didn't say handheld hose. It said devices. I have no idea what they meant. By Go to the website. There's more clarification, Larry. Yeah, it is. Usually they mean well, I, went, I, went, I, went to, I went to the website and I thought it said one thing. And I also uh, did talk to the police to ask them uh, if they're enforcing it. And they said, no, they're not enforcing it. That's what they said to me when I called. Hmm. Oh, my wife. My wife. It's kind of like face masks. Okay. <laughs> no, I think the Public Works Department is enforcing it. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, Generally, you see it in your water usage, that you know they can tell. I mean, I got a letter one time because I had inadvertently set my timer to come on it, not uh, you know whatever it was, uh, you know, to, to run until nine thirty instead instead of nine in the morning, and they let me know because that their records and their water usage, the smart meters they use, they could see that I was running my system half an hour long. Yeah, it's, it happened to me also. Same thing. I got the notice from them, my automatic, you know, timer, the sprinkler came off, and I got the notice. Uh-oh. Indra, I think you're on their list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on their list, actually. We we regraded our backyard, and we did redid the sprinklers, and, like, the woman that came out to give us, like, the waiver for, you know, the first, like, she was literally, like, the next day. Like, I literally had an email from her, and you could tell, like, Anybody who had gotten waivers had gotten notifications. Yeah. yeah. I think it's kind of odd, though. I know that's not everybody wants to say goodnight. I think it's kind of odd that you allowed to wash your car. And um, I'm not sure that's an essential thing to do, um, especially because you can go to a car wash that water, hopefully. Um, and that um, you're also allowed to, there's something, else. oh, and that the town is going to be watering the parks. I mean, what's the problem with a brown field? The, the grass will come back here. So I, I don't get why those are exemptions. Can't play ball anyways, can you? <laughs> <laughs> and the sprinklers nowadays are smart enough to know that. Like I had my, I, I reset mine like because I had it for every, I don't know, I think you only need grass watered like twice a week or something. So the, the newer sprinkler systems are smart enough to, that I just reprogrammed it to adhere to the, New rules, and I'll probably cut it back to once a week because you don't really need, you don't really, you don't really need that much water right. per week. I mean, it some people probably had theirs reset to like your regular schedules, like every other day. I mean, you don't. So many people just don't believe that. They just don't think that that's true, and it is. Yeah, especially if you need about an inch long. Cut it yeah, long. Need, it shades need, itself. Need, yeah, uses less water. They probably need once, twice a week, if that. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't need to go you when it's brown you don't have to cut it as often yeah <laughs> work anyway kent you were actually on rachel's special list because i saw your name on there i can see the list too <laughs> <laughs> if 
because you've got different I didn't need to do it. I, a new lawn. I, I called I called the sprinkler guy the next day and he walked me through how to amend my schedule. So I was uh yeah, so hey, I, I think that's fantastic that they're all over it. So that's I think it's good. Okay. Uh I'll just note that I had to fill up my pool because I needed a new liner. I got two of the biggest freaking trucks of water come to fill up my pool. I couldn't believe how big they were. Yeah. Uh, to see. <laughs> and the guy the guy told me that the, actually the water was free, but but the cost of transportation was eight hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh the next meetings are July 9th and August 13th. We're going to our summer into our summer schedule. One one meeting during the month of July and one meeting during the month of August. Is there any other business? All right, could I have a motion to adjourn this meeting, please? So move, this. So move Second. 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 All right, Don, how do you vote? Yes. Gail. Yes. And Indra. Yes. Bill. Yes. Ed. Yes. All right, Kent. I assume you are. Uh, you agree with this? Yes. All right. The chair votes yes. That was six zero zero. The meeting is adjourned. Uh, everyone, have a good fourth holiday. Stay safe, and we'll see you next month. Same to you, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.